Welcome back my friends to the channel. Today, we're delving into the rich history of Azeroth, exploring the aftermath of the Sundering and the dawn of a new era for the Night Elves. So, buckle up as we uncover the secrets of the Second Well of Eternity, the birth of Nordrassil, and the emergence of the Sentinels. Now, let's embark on a journey through time, discovering the events that shaped the destiny of the Night Elves and the world of Azeroth. And don't forget to share your thoughts down below, your insights are what make this community so awesome. Alright, let's get started with another epic chapter of Azeroth's history. The aftermath of the Sundering left Azeroth in ruins, the Well of Eternity the coveted source of the Night Elves' arcane power was no more. In their desperation for refuge, the surviving Night Elves sought sanctuary to the northwest in Mount Hyjal, one of the few areas untouched by the catastrophe. As they journeyed to Hyjal, Malfurion Stormrage and the other Night Elves came to a unanimous decision. Arcane magic was too dangerous to be used, and to prevent another disaster like the War of the Ancients, they agreed to banish its practice. Upon reaching the summit of Hyjal, their shock was palpable when they discovered a second, smaller well of eternity. Even more astonishing was the Illidan they found at the shores of this new well. Prior to the Sundering, Illidan had collected vials filled with enchanted liquid from the original well of eternity. He had poured these vials into the lake atop Hyjal, turning its pristine waters into another source of arcane power. A violent confrontation ensued when a group of night elves confronted Illidan, leading his brother Malfurion to intervene. Despite their objections, Illidan argued that a new will of eternity was essential for the night elves to combat the inevitable return of the Burning Legion. While some highborn survivors sided with Illidan, the majority of night elves condemned his rash actions fearing that a new well could serve as a gateway for the Legion. With no other recourse, the Night Elves decided to take decisive action against Illidan. Malfurion with the assistance of Cenarius, imprisoned Illidan deep within a barrow. Malfurion entrusted the priestess May of Shadowsong with the duty of guarding the wayward sorcerer. She would later become the Warden, founding an order of elite and secret of night elf jailers. Upon learning of the second well of eternity, three of the great dragon aspects arrived in Hyjal, recognizing the potential danger it posed. They understood that as long as this well of power existed, it could be exploited as a means for the legion to invade Azeroth again. The aspect of life Alexstrasza, used an enchanted seed to grow a colossal tree over the Well of Eternity. The tree's branches soared into the heavens, and its roots penetrated deep into the earth, infusing the world with life. This great tree acted as a seal, preventing the Legion or any other malevolent force from abusing the Well's powers. Malfurion and the other Night Elves named this colossal world tree Nordrassil, signifying the crown of the heavens. They vowed to protect it and the well of eternity at any cost. To honor this commitment, the dragon aspects offered their blessings to the night elves. Alexstrasza's blessing infused renewed strength and vitality into Nordrassil, extending this boon to the night elves as well. Mighty Isra, the aspect of dreams, bound the tree and all night elf druids to the emerald dream, making their connection to it far more accessible. Finally Nazdormu, the aspect of time, interwove his powers throughout Nordrassil, ensuring that as long as the massive tree endured, the night elves would be blessed with immortality. With these enchantments in place, the aspects departed for their hidden sanctuaries. Thanks to their blessings, the second well of eternity ceased to be a beacon for demons, and the Legion could no longer use it as a gateway into Azeroth. It became a symbol of the Night Elf's bond with the natural world, 
a sacred monument that granted their race immunity from illness, disease, and the ravages of time. Over the centuries, the growing Night Elf Society expanded southward into the dense forests of Ashenvale situated below Mount Hyjal. Leading this resurgence was Tyrande Whisperwind, the High Priestess of the Sisterhood of Elune. Her order had emerged from the War of the Ancients with relatively minimal damage, positioning them to fill the void of power among the Night Elves. Tyranda adeptly established the Sisterhood as the leaders of both the Night Elf government and the military. She also founded a new protective force known as the Sentinels. Comprising devout and highly skilled warrior women, this order was dedicated to safeguarding the emerging Night Elf society. The Sentinels took to patrolling the misty forests of Ashenvale, forming bonds with the indigenous creatures and standing vigilant against any potential threats. At the same time, Malfurion continued to nurture a culture of druidism among his people. With arcane magic abandoned, many former sorcerers embraced Malfurion's teachings and devoted themselves to living in harmony with nature. These early druids did not adhere to the rigid military codes and hierarchy of the Sentinels. Malfurion's followers were free to delve into the mysteries of the Emerald Dream as they wished. They experimented with the art of shapeshifting, adopting the forms of powerful bears, agile nightsabers, swift-winged crows, and various other creatures that roamed the deep woods. These druids would frequently enter long periods of hibernation as they traversed the Emerald Dream, a practice that vexed Tyranda and her sentinels. Although they often sought the druids' assistance in safeguarding night elf lands, few of Malfurion's followers were awake to respond to the call. Amidst these shifts in night elf society, an old adversary was regaining strength in Kalimdor. Following the War of the Ancients, the remaining satyrs had concealed themselves in the world's shadowy corners, biding their time to retaliate against the night elves. One of these horned creatures, Zalan the Feared, rallied the satyrs and prepared them for war. Zalan's ascent also attracted the attention of the remnants of the Burning Legion, which had been trapped on Azeroth after the Sundering. Doom guards and other malevolent beings emerged from their dark sanctuaries, drawn to the satyrs' call. Together, this demonic army launched a vicious assault on the Night Elf stronghold of Night Run, plunging their delicate society back into a state of war. The initial encounters with the Satyrs took a heavy toll on the Night Elves resulting in significant losses. The tide of battle began to shift when Chandri's Feathermoon, the captain of the Sentinels and Tyranda's adopted daughter, proposed a new strategy to combat the demonic forces. She suggested that the druids be awakened from their journeys in the Emerald Dream to join the fight. Recognizing the extent of the corruption inflicted by Zalan upon the Night Elf forests, Malfurion agreed to Shandri's proposal and summoned the most potent druids in Kalimdor to his side. The druids and sentinels, working in unison, penetrated the heart of the Satyr territory. Chandris's brilliant guerrilla tactics played a crucial role in helping the Night Elves prevail over many of their adversaries, including Zalan himself. As the Night Elves made headway in the conflict, a new threat emerged from within their own ranks. A group of rogue druids, seeking to harness the primal power of the wild god Goldrin, adopted savage wolf forms. Under the leadership of Rolar Fire. These druids became known as the Worgen. Rilar and his fierce companions became slaves to their own uncontrollable rage, tearing through friend and foe alike in the heat of battle. Night elves bitten by the Worgen contracted a virulent curse that transformed them into war gen as well. The Worgen crisis forced Malfurion to reflect on the state of druidism. He realized that without some form of regulation, Individuals like Rolar would inevitably misuse their druidic abilities. 
Malfurion and his followers established the Cenarian Circle, a harmonious organization intended to guide and oversee the world's druids and their practices. The Cenarian Circle's initial significant task was to address the Worgen threat. Seeing no other viable solution, Malfurion reluctantly banished Rolar and the Worgen to the Emerald Dream. There Malfurion believed, they would enter into a peaceful eternal slumber, beneath the enchanted tree known as Daryl Nair. Following the banishment of the Worgen, any hopes the satyrs harbored of achieving victory were shattered. The Night Elves continued to push deep into the territory of their adversaries, gradually purging the remaining corruption from their forests. The few satyrs that remained concealed themselves in the shadows, never again posing such a significant threat to Night Elf society. The surviving Highborn after the Sundering, faced the challenge of assimilating into the new Night Elf society. Many of them found it irresistible to continue practicing arcane magic, despite strict laws banning sorcery. Repeated warnings, and the threat of death as punishment for violating these laws could not deter them. The allure of arcane energy was too strong to resist. Dathrimer Sunstrider, a respected highborn, grew increasingly frustrated with the restrictions and punishments imposed on his kind. He believed that arcane power was the rightful inheritance of the highborn, and denounced anyone who feared it as a coward. Dathrimer and his followers openly embraced arcane magic, defying the other night elves and challenging them to respond. For Dathrimer and his fellow highborn, practicing arcane magic was not merely an act of rebellion. They believed that the night elves were destined for greatness. While they did not fully condone the actions of Queen Hashera, they were convinced that night elf society could once again thrive as a powerful empire, but this revival would require the revival of arcane magic. The Highborn's open defiance of the ban on arcane magic took the other night elves by surprise. They could not bring themselves to condemn, so many of their own to death. Instead they chose to exile the Highborn, and forbid them from setting foot on Hyjal, effectively cutting them off from the Well of Eternity's energies. Most of the Highborn embraced their banishment as a form of liberation, from the constraints of Night Elf society. Under Dathrimer's leadership, they built a fleet of mighty ships, and set sail leaving Kalimdor for uncharted lands beyond the Maelstrom. They eventually arrived on a new continent that would later become known as the Eastern Kingdoms, a region teeming with lush forests and wildlife. The Highborn, who had traveled on foot for months, eventually settled in a place known to the indigenous humans as Tirisful. Initially, interactions between the Highborn and humans were rare, but over time, the humans began to share legends of a metal-skinned guardian named Tyr, who had sacrificed himself to vanquish a monstrous foe in Tirisful. The Highborn skilled in detecting arcane energies, sensed potent lay energies in the land, which the primitive humans could not perceive. Although it was not a will of eternity, the lingering supernatural presence intrigued the experienced arcane practitioners. Some highborn speculated that they could unlock its secrets and restore themselves to their former glory. They were driven by a sense of urgency, because following their exile from the well of eternity, they began to experience the effects of aging and disease. Their skin lost its violet hue, and they even started to shrink in stature. Fearing that these effects would worsen over time, the Highborn were eager to find a solution. As the Highborn tapped into the latent magic of the Terraceful region, they encountered dark and shadowy energies that drove some of them to madness. These afflicted individuals believed that the humans had settled on the most potent ley lines in the area and they argued for displacing or conquering the primitive humans. Dathrimar disagreed with this aggressive approach. He saw no reason to wage war against a people who posed no threat to his kind. 
he sensed that the dark energies in the land might be responsible for the sudden rise in belligerence and madness among the highborn. To prevent violence and spare his people from further calamity, Dathrimmer decided to lead the highborn away from Tirisful, aiming to find a new home to the north. His scouts had discovered a region rich in lush forests and potent lay energies, and this became the destination for the beleaguered highborn, as they ventured into the unknown. Following the exile of the highborn, the night elves under the leadership of Tyranda Whisperwind and Malfurion Stormrage faced a challenging period in their history. While the highborn's departure marked the end of a tumultuous chapter, there was little time for rest or complacency. Malfurion and the Cenarian Circle focused on restoring the balance of nature, and cleansing lands still tainted by demonic corruption. They worked in collaboration with Isra and her green dragon flight, often venturing into the mystical realms of the Emerald Dream. Malfurion and the other druids entered periods of extended slumber, allowing their dream forms to traverse Isra's domain. In the meantime, Tyranda and Chandris with the Sentinels continued their vigilant watch over the Night Elf territory. They tirelessly patrolled the forests, ever alert for any signs of demonic resurgence. Their dedication led to an era of peace and serenity, with life flourishing in the forests and groves of Hyjal. During this time, the keepers of the grove and woodland dryads, who were Cenarius's own offspring, emerged from the secluded Moonglade. The night elves held these creatures in high regard, seeing their presence in Ashenvale's wilds as a promising omen for the future. In addition to the keepers of the grove and the dryads, other mystical creatures became more common in the open. Wise treants, elusive fairy dragons, and mythical chimeras began roaming the forests near night elf territories. Over the centuries, the night elves would develop strong bonds with these magical beings and call upon them in times of need. With Malfurion often immersed in the dream, the responsibility of governing the Night Elf's daily affairs fell to Tyranda. While the role was demanding, she embraced it. Despite the hope and optimism that prevailed among her people, Tyranda couldn't shake the nagging feeling that darker times lay ahead. They had banished the Burning Legion, but Sargeras remained at large, possibly plotting another devastating assault. Tyranda was convinced that it was only a matter of time before Sargeras renewed his burning crusade to threaten all life. She remained resolute that she and her people must be prepared for such a day. My awesome viewers, wrapping up today's episode, I hope you've soaked in some fresh insights and knowledge. Drop your thoughts in the comments below, share what you enjoyed about the episode and any cool new info you've picked up. To my dedicated squad, if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, now's the perfect time to show some love and support. Until the next episode, I'm sending all of you, my fantastic audience, nothing but the best vibes.